You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 2nd of August and I'm Roland from Milford. The lockdown in Sydney was extended by at least four weeks and as expected, additional stimulus was obtained, which is now more similar to last year's JobKeeper. On a positive note, the vaccination rate continues to increase and we are approaching 1 million vaccinations per week. This should continue to grow as we receive more Pfizer doses. Australian CPI data was released and saw prices rise 0.8% quarter on quarter, which was slightly ahead of consensus. This takes annual inflation to 3.8%, and although not rampant, some pressures are building, with fruit and vegetable prices, for example, up 5.1% quarter on quarter. The Parliamentary Budget Office did some interesting analysis, which showed $12.5 billion of JobKeeper payments were paid to companies whose turnover did not fall by the 30% threshold, and in fact, $4.6 billion went to firms whose turnover rose. We'd expect to see more headlines around this and a call for JobKeeper repayments over the next weeks and months. In equity news, China's stocks got smashed early last week before recovering a touch as increased government regulation spooked global investors. There's massive governance risk in these stocks, given the government's heavy-handed approach to any company that becomes near too large to control. Zip, Sizzle, OpenPay and LayBuy released their Q4 results over the last two weeks, which showed continued strong growth, particularly for those exposed to the US. Despite this, Customer additions were slower than what most people expected, which clearly made the market nervous, given three of the four sold off quite materially on the day of their announcements. Temple and Webster, the online homeware company, had a bumper result, with full-year sales growing 88% year-on-year. The market was particularly pleased with the trading update, which highlighted they were still growing very strongly in July despite comping the heightened trading period last year. Spark Infrastructure received a higher bid from the same consortium, with the offer price increasing 5.4% to $2.95 a share. Spark have allowed increased DD to the consortium post this revised offer. The US reporting season is charging along, with the big technology companies reporting largely fantastic results. Despite this, the share prices have been less rewarding than one would have thought, which highlights the heightened valuation some of these companies are trading on. Turning to the week ahead, We will be keenly focused on Australia reporting season, which kicks off this week. Large caps generally report earlier on in the month, with a mad rush of small caps in the final week of August. Expect largely strong results across the board. However, the lockdown will likely see softer July trading updates for some, and guidance commentary will be more limited than a normal period given the uncertainty. The RBA has their monthly meeting tomorrow, and the market will be closely watching to see whether they walk back on the QE easing they previously highlighted. It will also be interesting to see their interpretation of the current COVID outbreak and how that will impact Australia. A bit of economic data to look for in the US is the ISM Manufacturing Index and also the non-farm payrolls data which is out in the US on Friday. This will be particularly interesting given the labour issues many companies are highlighting. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.